the exceeding greatness of his power i'm just sharing with you my contemplations how do you put an ark and then you put dagon and shut the door so there's no manipulation by morning you come and find dagon falling face forward because everything bows everything bows including inanimate things and now today we claim that he's giving us power authority and yet if we are to be honest the realm of the spirit does not seem to met out that level of respect for the average believer glory in the church not glory around creation ladies and gentlemen if i stand before a sea that wants to destroy a particular state in nigeria and i command the water to reverse not part reverse by the same power moses used if it does happen jesus will not be glorified i will be persecuted till i die by what power did you tell a dam that is about to destroy a state and you stood claiming you are a priest and yet many times we say we are greater than Moses be careful though <laughs> it was not a parable frail man stammerer but power he stood in front of the Red Sea and straight be a man who had met God he said I have made you a God unto Pharaoh is that in your Bible I'm showing you Paul's burden Paul's prayer that every believer that wants to bring glory to God at this end time you must understand the exceeding greatness of his power Moses stood before the Red Sea in front of over 2.5 million people and parted the Red Sea I don't know if you understand that miracle an ocean part heater and teeter creates walls this is a God we serve if I wear my shoe now as a Christian and my shoe does not fade does not grow old and grows with my leg you will most likely call me a herbalist say no way it's impossible I'm, I'm just showing you the standard is the reason why it is so difficult to bet a little miracle and if that miracle does arrive we idolize that miracle but I believe that before Christ returns maybe not everybody but there are a few people that will press past this curtain and tear that veil and say Lord demonstrate your power oh Come and manifest your power today. Oh. Come and manifest your power today. Oh. oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power today. Oh. oh God of signs, oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer. Come and manifest your power Dideo, Dideo. Let me tell you this There were people who walked upon this our earth I tell you they, they literally were men who were the, it, was, it was worthy to fear them These guys use words to change climates I don't know what kind of human being they were Human beings they were imagine having that kind of power there are a few people here and there in our dispensation that demonstrated the power men like apostle babalola they stepped into you know archbishop benson idahosa and others that history did not do justice to capture them but you see i am personally tired of every talking about apostle babalola he's dead Archbishop Benson Idahosa, he is dead, but you are alive. You and the God that empowered him, he's alive forever. We talk a lot, and sometimes we use it to just call cheap points. 
Oh, once upon a time, Apostle Babalola, he matched a rock and an angel. There's the imprint that Mr. Man. If the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, what is the testimony of our own generation? You see, they captured dimensions of God and immortalized their impact. Even though they've gone, we cannot forget them because an imprint of their encounter remains upon the earth. This generation must also have something that our children will say, if you doubt that this, our fathers knew God, this is the evidence. They found him. They trapped a dimension of his power. I'm just imagining in my mind that suddenly Jesus were to appear here and then some of the patriarchs and imagine that Paul just collected the mic from me. I'm not idolizing him. You will be surprised. My goodness. Paul. These were guys that will be preaching. Someone will fall and die. They will raise the person up and continue the lecture. Power. Exceeding greatness of his power. Steps into a land and sees a damsel with the spirit of divination. Most of us will partner with the girl. Immediately. Making ministry easy. But by discernment, he said, no, something is wrong. Got that demon out immediately. That you caught a man, ladies and gentlemen. Now, please don't feel offended. But imagine that someone was kidnapped and physically angels came. Is that not what happened in Acts chapter 12? Came and picked him. All the people were like dead men. Picked him, walked away with him. Imagine that someone is missing. And while you are praying, he knocks the door and says, I just came out of somewhere in Nasarawa State. Who brought you out? An angel. You will most likely not believe. We talk a lot about angels because we have not seen them. Some of us, the day you see an angel, you will cast the angel and pray that you will never come again. I'm priming your hunger. We need to press for more. I'm telling you, let's stop recycling shadows around ourselves. The kind of end time ministry God is mandating that will bring him glory will have to be a display of power beyond shouting, beyond falling down, beyond rolling. Those things are elementary levels. There are weightier dimensions where God sends a man to a family for two days. As you step into that family, everything, literally. What is wrong with this man? Answer stage four, I bring you life. Stand up immediately. That someone will go to the hospitals. I know we, 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 we chant it like a recitation and leave it there. You want to see God glorified? One genuine display of his power, I tell you, will bring more souls than many crusades combined. It is true. Listen, if the call of God is upon your life here, listen don't be in a hurry to just jump into ministry the bar has gone higher that thing you think will bring members you will waste your time people are hungry thirsty desperate they want to see the living god because other idols are now convincing them they have gone to some idol somewhere there is a hundred year old deity in the village somewhere even though you are telling them not to serve idols but every time they are hungry the idol gave them food now you are saying there is a god that is above them they are saying show it all let there be a manifestation let there be a manifestation my grandmother had children they will say 25 26 children as one woman because of her worship to that idol and now you come carrying your bible your concordance and you say i am a new creation in christ my brother demonstrate it before you are made a graduate there is something called defense huh so all your topics and all your learning you sit before those who will accredit you and they listen to you while you speak and say all kinds of things they ask you a few questions then they say okay fine most of us that interview you see we have failed it again and again and again because you've not been able to bring defense to the name of the lord come and manifest your power today come and manifest your power 
Hallelujah. Spectacular manifestations of his power. Spectacular manifestations of his glory. Do you know what happens when your word truly becomes like the word of God? That when you speak to people, they know it will come to pass. Because you told them that you come from his presence. When Zechariah doubted Gabriel, he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. We like come from his presence with falsehood. It's an insult to his presence. You mean his presence could not judge falsehood and I arrived here with falsehood. I am Gabriel. If you don't respect me, respect where I'm coming from. I stand in the presence of God. Not everybody can stand in his presence. So I am Gabriel. I've been given access to stand in his presence. There is a purifying that his presence does. There is no guile in my lips. If I bring you a word, trust it. And most of us claim not just that we are standing in his presence. We say he is in us. But the truth is the results don't show. Can I lead you to cry in one minute? Father, let my life manifest your power. Let my life, let my life manifest your power. Not just shouting and falling down. Genuine manifestations of the God life released through me bringing many to salvation you are a transmuter of the benefits the benefits that are in God forgiveness healing deliverance honor prosperity through your life take a minute to pray Rateke parantos kote brande ke beretos kalibras. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Please be seated. So two things now. Number one, from that scripture, we are saying the central message in chapter 20 and 21 is about giving God glory. And that all creation, everything God created has a mandate to give him glory. But that there is a dimension of glory God is looking forward to receiving from the church. To be glorified in the church by Christ Jesus. And then number two, that Paul now begins to go further in verse 20 to talk about the extent of God's ability. The greatness of our God. Now, listen to this. I wrote something here. I said the limitations in our results is not a problem with God's ability the limitation in our results is not a problem of or a problem with God's ability that means in diagnosing why the riches of the God life does not flow through you rule out the subject of God's incompetence it is not part of the it's not part of the the considerations never never for once allow your mind to think that it is because God was incapable that certain results did not happen. Mm -mm. Let that never be your consideration. In diagnosing why the manifestation of his power and grace is limited in your life and my life, rule out any incompetence on the part of God. It is never a power problem. Mm -mm. If the sick are not healed, it is not a power problem from God. If the oppressed are not delivered, if the prophetic word that comes, whether through his servant or wherever, does not come to pass. I'm saying in diagnosing what may have gone wrong, rule out the fact that it was incompetence on God's part. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we think. 
Apostle, why am I still looking for a job till now? Whatever the answer is, let's explore together from scripture. But one thing you need to rule out is the fact that it was never incompetence. It is not that the problem overwhelmed God. He had no solution and then he just kept quiet to protect himself. No, sir. Never had he been confronted with a situation that surmounted his power. There are times, like you'll be learning, that his power does not flow. There are times that his power will not flow, but it is not an issue of incompetence. Look at me. If your tap at home does not flow out with water, it is not a damn problem. Do you agree with me on that? It is not a damn problem. Not at all, not ever. If you, at any point in your life, try to open up a tap and you do not find water flowing, the problem is not the dam. No. The world today is fighting global warming because land space, land mass is being eaten by water. The ice is melting because of the atmospheric condition. Are we together? So there's abundance of water. But whether it can flow to your house to profit you is a dis another discussion all the same. But I'm saying in diagnosing why the power of God seems scarce within the world of men, within the body of Christ, and is stopping and shortchanging our potential of giving God glory. I'm saying in considering that, rule out incompetence from God's part. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not part of the considerations. The exceeding greatness of his power. My prayer for you as we continue is that one of these days you will see the power of God show up in your life in a way that will humble you. You will see the power of God show up in your life that God will do something as a signature, signing it upon his, your life. It, it will be something that when you tell people the testimony, it becomes too notable that even your enemies will clap and say, I don't like you, but I can't deny this one. This one is the manifold workings of God. May it be your experience in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. By this time tomorrow, turns the economy of an entire nation in one day. That means there are other dimensions to the world's economic problems. There are economic solutions, but I tell you there are spiritual solutions. It's just that the saints have not yet ascended to that level. Are we together? How about problems of healthcare? My God, imagine with all due respect that every man of God accents this touch in the spirit where everybody within your circumference, even though you build their faith, yes, but that you have been able to stretch yourself in the spirit to carry heavier weights of that power. Nobody sits in your assembly and goes back sick. Miracle services will even end. We'll use it for something else, maybe to pray or whatever it is. But look at the ratio of results we command, healing results, versus people who are genuinely sick. It's a call to press for more. Do you agree with me on that? It's a call to press for more. Do you know, I have to be honest with you here. As much as God has done so much through my life, and I'm grateful to be used by God in the way that he's used me and he's using me, sometimes I get provoked onto godliness. When I meet people who I once prayed for over a condition, are we together? And they see me later on and they say, well, we're still believing God for, you know, maybe healing of someone. And he says, well, I'm still trusting God. I take responsibility and go back and say, Lord, this is not a power problem. This is not a power problem. It is most likely an alignment problem. Something is wrong. There are results that I produce now by mercy that I could not produce yesterday. So I know that there are others I can produce that this version of me is not yet aligned enough. Who is learning? Yes. I'm imagining what more Koinonia can do for the glory of God. What more we can do, ladies and gentlemen, that we are able to host God in such a way demonstrate the reality of God here and now without making all kinds of noise noise that does not have proof it is true that people are getting healed 
But what of those dying without getting healed? And we know it is not their time. It is true that people are prospering. But what about the multitudes of genuine God lovers who keep shouting amen to prophetic words every week to a point right now that prophecy has become an object of mockery within the intellectual and economic community. Justifiably so because it's not yielded any results. Nobody would dare despise prophesying if you have empirical proof that by prophecy you help to navigate someone's life towards prosperity nobody will laugh at it but right now it's become an issue of mockery justifiably so receive amen receive amen receive amen next time the person cannot come to church because he's in jail it did not work ah may things change in the name of jesus hallelujah when people lift their hands and shout amen they only hope that it works because they have a record of disappointments and that disappointment has pierced their hearts too many times i don't blame people when they say receive and they're just watching say, let's round up please and leave this place there's a track record of the seeming impotency of the word as it comes from the lips of we who claim to be his servants we need to step up the bar I can tell you one thing for sure the power of God is as real as it was in the Bible and I'm praying join me in that prayer I'm praying that in our lifetime God will allow us by his mercy to be able to host greater dimensions of his power that will demonstrate it here and now that he's alive you believe that say amen, amen. you believe it will happen through you say amen, amen. ladies and gentlemen if just to walk on your mind imagine that jesus appeared to you now and placed his hand upon your hand and said every sick body you know who is about to die if you love them go and place this hand you know you will not be tired some of you will run straight to our general hospitals because there's someone you love so much who is about living but do you know that there are people now I, I, i'm just challenging you this is an apostolic ministry you don't go to the hospital to tell the doctor what is is right with you you tell the doctor what is wrong so they will correct it you know how many prayer chains are happening over sick people right now while they are deteriorating till they die and yet prayer chain is happening Go and read the Bible. What happened when they created a prayer chain? Angels came. Things changed. Where are those angels? They don't know the address to Nigeria. Or the nation is so sinful that they can't come. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Is someone learning? Thank God for what He's helped us do. But I'm praying that we'll be that generation that will be honest with ourselves, not condemning ourselves. But knowing that the bar has been lifted in the spirit and we are largely short of it we need to go back to god and say show us the formula the real formula that controls the arrival of genuine apostolic power because for many people we have tried we have tried and just touched we are smelling smoke but the food that comes from the kitchen we've not been able to hold it we just suspect that you've been around the kitchen but where is the substance of that reality are we together now it's hopeful when you see someone smelling smoke it means you are closer to the kitchen but at a, you are not going to eat smoke you will be hungry and you are waiting for the meal and some people have been waiting forever i'm praying that there are people who will pass be beyond the layer of religion and get to that point where you can take something of spiritual substance and bring to a generation and say by mercy i have found it the key to an authentic healing ministry the key to an authentic deliverance the key to authentic breakthrough may god push you to that realm 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Are we learning now? Please sit down. The man who was writing about the power of God was not naive in the things of power. Paul was one person who did not just demonstrate power. He was the one who taught the body of Christ, the dimensions and the administration of spiritual power. Very few of the apostles touched the subject of power because it was a very delicate subject. It required maturity and experience. There are very, very few. The only other person who really spoke about power was Peter. But Paul single-handedly carried this doctrine of power and taught the Corinthian church, arranged the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit, showed why certain things were not working. Paul for you. It is the same Paul who is teaching the church in Ephesus. Now unto him who is able. Say it again. God is able. One more time. Say God is able. Say he is able to do. Say it. He is able to do. Yes. To do means to lift. He is able to do means he is able to restore. He is able to bring laughter. He is able to heal. That someone who is right now dying, God has the power to lift him from the bed of affliction. Do you believe that? I remember it was said that Smith Wigglesworth, if I recall, that someone had passed on and he carried the person, jacked him up and punched the person once. The person fell down like a pack of cards, carried the person a second time, jacked him up, said in the name of Jesus. The third time, the person sneezed and came back to life power no noise genuine results maria woodward etide was told that she was in a conference like this and there were all kinds of people mocking her mocking her and laughing at her and she simply said the lord judge you and one of them the tongue protruded like cancer stage four imagine cancer of the mouth like that it stayed like that brethren prayed and nothing happened he was told that they had to come seek her pizza apologize to her and all she did was to slap the tongue and it went down men not not angels these are people who walked upon the earth documented i have watched some of the videos of these people i remember it was aa allen i think he was a gentleman who had polio it was very widespread those days look at the genuine miracle you would watch a tl osborne crusade and you would see literally see metallic bracelets where people came to the crusade with a significant part of their feet shorter than the other they would not need the bracelet the, the, the you know whatever it is again and they would throw it i'm talking about healing miracles not to talk of nature miracles that they would tell them hurricanes and all kinds of nature disasters were coming and they would stand single-handedly not in a radio station they would reverse it and it would pass question is it really the will of god for hurricanes and tornadoes to come and destroy people destroy their means of livelihood and here we are believers saying we have been crowned with glory and honor and yet we are prayerful but it's not producing the power required it's not to discourage you to stop it's just to let you know that a bar has been lifted in the spirit and i'm here to call you tonight in the name of jesus christ that god is saying stop celebrating shadows let's press for substance there is a level of god's glory we need to be revealed i have seen people healed i have seen the manifestations of god's power and for those that receive those miracles i know how it translated to salvation over their families the word of the lord said ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you we believe that this word have come through the mouth of god's servant has transformed you and it has set burdens in your heart creating um this mindset of heaven at last please if you have not subscribed to our channel do so by subscribing to our channel and we believe that god is set to change your life for good in jesus name and um, if you have not liked the video, do so by liking this video, comment, and share to your loved ones. And as you do so, God is set to do new things in your life. Because the word of the Lord says that the plan he has for you are of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. God bless you. Hallelujah.